Society members, this is Tobias and Emily coming to you from the great north woods of Wisconsin. We're actually in Conover, which is near Eagle River, which is in Vilas County. Yeah, so we're here in uh, Vilas County, just outside of Eagle River, like Emily said, and we're actually only several miles away from one of Wisconsin's most famous uh, UFO sighting and contactee cases. Uh, back in 1961, uh, Joe Simonton actually said um, that he had not only uh, witnessed a flying saucer, but it had landed in his yard and he had actually made contact with its inhabitants. Uh, and so, uh, again, this was back in 1961, uh, it was April 18th around 11 a.m. Uh, Joe Simonton, who was a plumber by trade, lived in a farmhouse outside of Eagle River. And he said that he was drawn outside one day by the sound of uh, knobby tires on wet pavement. That's what he said this, this saucer sounded like. And so he goes outside and he sees this thing having, you know, landed in his yard. And, you know, he described the saucer as sort of two pie plates put together. So that, that classic, you know, 40s yeah. or 50s... Uh, uh, flying saucer shape and um, you know he said it was about 12 feet tall uh, maybe 30 feet in diameter and he approached this craft and uh, the the door opened in the side of it I guess um, and uh, and he saw three occupants in 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 there and um, he described these guys as sort of looking ethnic like he said they look Italian, yeah. basically, which which is strange. This is back when, you know, you have to remember, this is 1961. This is back when people still uh, commonly described UFO occupants as human-looking. Uh, this is sort of uh, pre, you know, gray or reptilian right. or whatever. Um, and so, although uh, there were similar cases that, that did exist, um, but anyway, my point is, People were a lot more likely to describe UFO occupants as human looking at this time. And uh, and that's what he said he saw. And so he sees these three occupants in here and they they didn't communicate anything verbally, but one of them was holding this jug, right? And uh, uh, Simonton indicated that this this being uh, motioned with the jug like it wanted him to, to fill it up with, with water. And so, you know, he takes the jug, runs inside, fills it up with water, brings it back, and, uh, you know, he delivers the, the, the water to these, these uh, UFO occupants. And he sees that one of these guys is cooking some sort of cake, like a pancake, on this, uh, uh, like, flameless grill. And, um, you know, so uh, it being a, a, a fair trade, I guess, these yeah. occupants give Simonton three of these pancakes and uh, that was it like mm -hmm. that was their that was their whole transaction and uh, and uh, you know Simonton decided to go public with his story um, you know by all accounts back then he was a well-respected member of his community uh, you know and because of, of coming forward with this story like he took a lot of flack uh, it was it was pretty costly to his reputation, yeah. honestly. Um, I don't see any real motive for him to make something like that up. Because believe me, I get it. That is an outlandish story. Like, that sounds crazy. But we're talking about a, a reliable, sober individual who had no reason to make this kind of story up. Mm -hmm. um, who, you know, really, I think, well, later in life he said, literally, that... If, uh, if he had it to do all over again, he, he wouldn't have told anybody. Uh, this was, you know, again, 1961. And, uh, you know, this is back when the, the, the Air Force had uh, a public uh, a UFO investigation project. And uh, so they took an interest. And, and uh, you know, he had these pancakes and, and he offered them up for uh, examination. And the analysis didn't return anything unusual. You know, they had normal pancake ingredients. It was like flour and lard and, and whatever else you would expect mm -hmm. without anything, you know, alien necessarily about it. Okay. Um, and so it's it's a really puzz like puzzling case, honestly. You know, it's, it's, it's really difficult uh, to, to know what to do with this. 
But one thing I will say, and I actually dug this up earlier, and you don't hear people talk about this very often. Mm -hmm. So Simonton's uh, experience took place on April 18th, 1961. And on uh, April 27th, uh, which was a Thursday, um, following Simonton's experience, uh, a, a family, along with a family friend uh, of theirs, uh, had a saucer sighting and described the craft very similarly to what Simonton described uh, as having landed in his yard. So this took place at the farm of a Tony Lorbetsky, which uh, was about 12 miles east of Eagle River. And so I was going through some old uh, UFO records and what I found was a transcript of an interview with the uh, family friend here. And so this is from 1961, and uh, it was it was recorded. It was actually recorded on April 27th. So I, I believe the the sighting would have been would have been before that. And so um, this was a uh, uh, interview with the family friend uh, Tom Hunt, and uh, and he was about 17 years old. Now. Uh, this comes up in the, the, the interview, and they ask him, you know, if he really had any previous interest in UFOs, or if he was familiar with any of the local UFO organizations, uh, you know, sort of what his knowledge of, of all of this was, and, you know, he, he really didn't have any, uh, as, as far as that goes, or he said he didn't have any, um, you know, I guess, you, you can't rule out, um, you know, him being disingenuous or something, but we don't have any reason to believe that he right. was. And so, uh, you know, he described how he was uh, sitting um, in the car of one of the uh, Lor Lorbetsky boys, and, uh, you know, they're just hanging out. And they saw this saucer, which he described as being, you know, uh, 15 feet tall, um, it was something like 40 feet in, in, in diameter, and this is his estimation. So, you know, this varies a little bit from what Simonton described, but uh, it doesn't vary enough for, you know, it just seemed really uh, more than just the, the normal variance in human perception, I think, you know. Um, we have, you know, it, it wasn't a real exciting Sighting. I mean, I'm sure it was for them, but compared to Simonton's experience, it, it, it really wasn't. But for them to see this craft, uh, you know, so soon after Simonton's experience, and uh, for them to describe it uh, so, so similarly to what Simonton uh, uh, described having landed in his yard, I mean, it's, it's compelling. And it's difficult to know what to do with, with Simonton's story. Um, it certainly is, in my opinion, a, a case of the very, you know, just upper limits of, of high strangeness. Um, you know, we have no reason to uh, disbelieve Simonton's testimony. You know, um, again, by, by all accounts, he was a, a trustworthy, sober, upstanding member of his uh, community. And so, you know, we're sort of left to wonder what exactly he experienced on that day back in 1961. Uh, you know, I, I wrote an article about it for the uh, website. You know, it's called Fairy Food for Thought, and I actually compare Simonton's experience to sort of traditional fairy lore because it, it, it really does have certain parallels. You know, you know even that um, exchange of food, for instance, is, is something that, that we see in fairy lore. Um, so, you know, I, I don't think that there's any reason to disregard Simonton's testimony out of hand uh, mm -hmm. simply because it seems a little silly or anything. Well, because, yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I think that, you know, humankind has a long history of these sorts of just inexplicable um, events. And, uh, and, and it's difficult because comparing Simonton's story, say, to fairy lore, doesn't necessarily explain it because we we don't really know what caused those earlier accounts. Right. Um, you know, out of, out of which the, the the folklore sort of grew. But I think what it does allow us to do is to take it seriously and 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 consider that it is worth um, 
examination because if this is something that's happening uh, on you know sort of a, a, a pseudo physical level you know say something that's that's happening more in the realm of consciousness uh, that that simply has you know certain physical uh, symptoms or or effects like the manifestation of, of these pancakes then you know that's that's something that I think really bears consideration and and uh, it changes the approach we would take investigating these these sightings you know rather than taking a a hard uh, uh, scientific materialist approach you know we would have to uh, sort of consider you know more occult techniques I think you know more more uh, uh, sort of esoteric knowledge and, and, and techniques when investigating these these phenomena because it's entirely possible that what we're dealing with is something um, that that isn't occurring necessarily you know um, uh, under this materialist paradigm mm -hmm. so I think Simonton's case really helps to uh, to drive that point home and I gotta tell you I'm pretty excited to be here just you know a few miles away from where that took place and uh, and and so I think our plan is this evening is we're gonna get some good stargazing in we'll have the camera outside with us of course and uh, you know I'd love to see a flying saucer but uh, at this point I'm not even sure that you could capture one on camera if you wanted to unless it wanted to you know to be seen right so we'll see but if we find anything interesting obviously we're going to post that um, we're going to have uh, some things included uh, in a like accompanying uh, 40 and file, right? Yes. Yeah, so actually um, taking a look at these old uh, like typed case files surrounding uh, you know Simonton and the, the uh, Lord, Lord Betsky sighting uh, is, is fascinating. So I'll include all of that in there, of course, because I mean, why would you not want to read that? Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, you know, if we find anything, we'll let you know. Uh, otherwise, you know, we're really just kind of looking forward to, uh, you know, worst case scenario, a fantastic night of stargazing. Thanks for watching.